Hi guys, it's Kendra from scatteredfashionista.com and I'm just going to do a quick flip through my bullet journal. Nothing fabulous here, but obviously with every bullet journal it's a personal experience, so people have asked to see mine, so I'm going to take you through it. I have the Leugstrom 1917 in this light blue. I do not know the exact name of the color, but I've just dressed it up with a little Erin Condren sticker there. And inside I also have a corner sticker, corner pocket sticker from Erin Condren. Just, it's a great place to stick checks or something like that. Not a lot of paper will fit in there. I also like to print out pictures of my family to stick in here just for things that I want to remember. And then we come right to the index. And this is kind of the base of the bullet journal system. This is where you can write down specifically what's going on. Um, so you can refer to things later. So I have my months here and then just the different collections within those months. So I have steering team notes from mops, notes on ebooks, productivity hacks, uh, green smoothie recipes, all sorts of different things. I am about halfway through my bullet journal and I'm also about halfway through the index. It's three pages long, but if you're worried about running out of space, there is an extra blank page here that you could always use. There's no dot grid or anything on there. Um, but it's there if you need it. And then I have my year at a glance calendar and this I basically just use to track my cycle and also to track dates away from home. Since we have two small children, dates away from home are pretty amazing um, and they don't happen that often. So I like to kind of make an extra note of that. This is my very first bullet journal. So as you can see, as I'm flipping through, it's me totally getting my bearings. Um, this is just a little reference of things I need to do every day, every week, and every month so that I don't have to keep referring or keep creating these lists as time goes by. Um, I have my list of books to read. I think I found this layout somewhere on Pinterest or Instagram, I'm not sure, but I just fill in the name of the book I want to read and then once I read it, I go ahead and color it in. I have a page for questions to ask, gift list for if my guy tells me what he wants, which he has not, and then my own wish list. And then I started out in the month of February. My bullet journal arrived on February 17th, and I started on the 18th, but I do like to have everything, so I went ahead and filled in the rest of the month. Now, because I, the nature of my work allows me to write off mileage, and that is thousands of dollars each year, I have a mileage tracker here in the front. This is also great because my car, my dashboard is not currently working so I can write what I did here and then I can go back and fill the mileage in later by referring to Google Maps. Um, but I do, I do like the month at a glance spread, that's just how my brain works and also for my business. And for advanced planning purposes, the way I do advanced planning is I actually print out the upcoming months. I got these grids from Revolution of Love. Bobby created these and you can just download them and print them. And I just washi tape them into the back and fill in stuff as it comes up. And then as each month comes, like when we get to that month, so when we're a couple wait, days away from July, I'll pull this out and create my spread up here. So that's that. Again, a lot of these layouts I've gotten ideas from other bullet journalers. So I have my memories page, my tracker, some collections here. I do like to doodle. And then this is my first day in, officially in the bullet journal. Um, and to me, this looks really ugly, but you got to start somewhere. So this is where I started. I was trying to get my bearings. I have some collections of notes. My first full week, I tried a weekly spread just to see how it worked for me, but I felt like it was kind of defeating the purpose of the bullet journal, which is you just keep going and you add as you need and you'll see where I do that later on. Like I could go do Monday and then do notes from a podcast or something like that. When I have this layout, I couldn't do that. So some notes again, and then we get right into March and in March, I didn't have any birthdays in February, but in March I started putting pictures of important birthdays. So that's my husband and that's my nephew. Again, the mileage tracker, memories, my habit tracker. And then I did PTL doodles for March. Um, Passion Theme Life creates a doodle challenge each month. This was really fun, but it is not sustainable for me. So I'm not doing it currently, but you can look those up on Instagram. 
Um, and I think it is passion themed life on Instagram. I don't think it's PTL, but not sure. I also tried a gratitude log in March. This is a great concept. I think it's important to practice gratitude and to make notes of what we're grateful for. However, I do this in my daily journaling practice, so I didn't feel like I needed to recreate this here. Plus, I kind of, you know, miss stuff, and I don't like how it feels when I miss stuff. Um, as I was trying to process what would work best for me, I knew I needed a weekly layout for what I needed to accomplish. So here for the week of February 29th th through March 6th, I created a task list, a notes section, and a future section. The task list I create at the beginning of the week. The notes in the future get created as things come up. So this would be something that I need to do, but it doesn't need to be necessarily this week. And it's not something I'm going to date on a calendar in the back. And I also had a goals section here. I've kind of changed how I do that. But again, it's a learning process. Um, here I have my dailies. More dailies. Some collections. Right here I have notes from Countdown to a New Kid by Friday by Kevin Lehman. It's a great book if you have kids. And then 10 Guideposts for Wholehearted Living by Brene Brown. And that is from Daring Greatly. Both awesome books. And I wanted to have these to reference. Again, my weekly list and then going into my dailies. Some notes from a podcast. And then this is where I really start to get my groove with my weekly spread. Kara at Boho Berry had uploaded, I think on Instagram, something kind of like this. Hers is a little different because she has different needs than me. But on one side here, I have the days of the week, Monday through Sunday. These are my appointments. So these are time specific things. And then on the right, are things I need to accomplish that day, but they are not time sensitive. Over here is my weekly task list. At this time I was separating the home task list. I don't do that anymore because it's just, again, too compartmentalized for me. And then my notes section. And then I have more dailies, another weekly here, more dailies, me. Um, yeah, always back up your files. That was a bad day. But it worked out. I have my affirmations that I read during my miracle morning and you can read about that on the blog. I will try to remember to put a link to that in the show notes. More dailies, notes from a podcast, a mind map for some stuff I was working on. And then here I have notes for my daughter's first birthday party. And this was fabulous. Just having this in one place, having it decorated so that I could add a picture of her invitation and just being able to track who I've invited, who can come, couldn't come, whatever, all that stuff. It was really nice to have it in one place, always with me. Um, this is where I finally figured out this page of my weekly spread. I got it down to where my tasks were all work and home related, note section and a future section. So I'm not doing the tasks and home, that's just too much. A couple more dailies and then we are into April. I have a couple birthdays here. While I'm on this issue of the birthdays and the pictures, I just wanted to show, I use the Polaroid Zip printer. This is a Bluetooth enabled printer you can print right from your phone. I got mine from Erin Condren and you can get it there. I don't know how much it is other places, but she has some good packages that you can come up with. And it just prints onto sticker paper. You can do full size pictures or here, like I have these all ready to go for future month's birthdays and I just cut them out and it's sticker paper so you peel it up in the back and you're ready to go. Um, again a really basic setup just birthdays, events, mileage, you name it. My April memories, April tracker, doodle pages. If you know me you know I love to doodle so these are just some fun places for me to practice doodles. I'm not great at drawing but I like to do it so I do it. Uh, more dailies. Here I was doing the green smoothie challenge from simplegreensmoothies.com. This started in April and rather than running to the computer every time I wanted to find a recipe, I just put them all here in my journal. And even though the challenge is over, when I want to prep some smoothies like I did today, I'll just pull this out and make up a batch of eight to ten smoothies and throw them in the freezer. Some more collections of brainstorming. This is my weekly spread. It's a little bit more colorful and I feel like this look is actually cleaner. I don't really know why, but it feels cleaner. So there you have it. 
Now here I started using, sorry about that. I started using the time tracker, which Kara at Boho Berry uses. I didn't want to use it because I didn't want to be just like her, but she's smart and it's logical and it works. Now when I do my daily planning, I'll create the Monday list on Sunday night. So Sunday night I sit down, I do my time tracker and I see, oh, I have about two hours here and about two hours here to work because I am working from home with both my kids home. So that kind of helps me figure out what I'm going to be able to accomplish. And I see here, I was going to be out that evening alone. I think I had a training or something. So anyways, it's really helpful for just planning your energy levels, what time you're going to have to work with, all that kind of stuff. So evidently I don't want you to see something there. I have no idea what it is. Another thing I like about the bullet journal is that you, again, you just put stuff in as you come to it. So that wouldn't have worked way back here when I did that. Oh, where is it? This spread. Okay. I have this spread here, but when you're going day by day here, I had notes from a sermon and I just popped them right in here. Some weeklies, dailies. Another thing you can do is add art. Um, something significant happened on this Monday and I wanted to kind of process it and commemorate it. So I created this art. It says, sometimes in the wind of change, we find our true direction. More dailies, more weeklies. Here I created a home show tracker. My business is, I'm in direct sales with a home show business. So this is to help me keep track of my hostesses, when their show is, all sorts of stuff. If I've given them the packet, if I've sent invitations, all that kind of stuff, how they prefer to um, communicate. So I have that all in one place. And I added some washi tape just so it's easier to find. More dailies, more dailies, dailies, sermon notes. I found this really cool verse in one of my Bible studies from Zechariah. It says, you are a prisoner of hope and hope's one of my favorite words. And I just, I wanted to commemorate finding that verse. So I created this and then we come to May and May I'm so smart. I forgot that May had 31 days. So I have no May 1st for my mileage. Thankfully I didn't go anywhere work related that day, but just, you know, pay attention. Here I also started using pictures for my memory pages. So I printed up this cute picture of my daughter. I don't know if you can see that, but whatever. There's my mileage tracker. More weeklies, dailies. Oh look, I made a little mistake there. So I made a heart. Um, things to sell. I'm just trying to clean out our house this is to help me keep track of it. I need to keep track of keeping track of it though. Um, dailies, blog post ideas, dailies, dailies and notes, weeklies, dailies, dailies, dailies. Oh, here on this next page that I'm not showing you is my weight loss chart. So yeah, you don't get to see that. Um, and then I have some sermon notes and then this is my May blogging calendar. I was using a separate bullet journal for my blog and it was just too compartmentalized for me. So I've started doing it this way and this was my first month. Now I'm going to start tracking Instagram, Pinterest, and um, Twitter on here as well. So I'm getting the hang of that. And then back to weeklies. But it's fun. You can do the same thing, but make it look different. Um, weeklies, dailies. Yeah, dailies. Uh, because I like to start my weeklies as one big spread, I decided to do a doodle here. Still not done, but I'll just work on it when I have time and I'm bored, which is never. Um, here I wanted to change it up, so I used some fonts from Cindy at llamaslovelettering.com, which is kind of fun. She's great. She has great tutorials. Dailies. Dailies. I could doodle there. Whatever. And then June. We are at June. And again, lots of birthdays, anniversaries, Father's Day, all that good stuff. It's going to be a crazy month. No memories yet. It's only June 3rd. On my tracker, however, I did try to kind of um, trim down my list. So just really things I want to focus on. They're not all necessarily important, but they're important to me. And then I also created my big, hairy, audacious goals for June. And I got these cute flag stickers from um, 
Kelly at Beyond the Paper Flower. She's on Etsy and Instagram at Beyond the Paper Flower. And also these cute little page tabs, which she has now created. I trimmed this one down and then I asked her and she created some specifically for the Wikstrom. So it's a great spread. Now this is my blog calendar for this month. And this is what I'm doing is I will use a post-it to plan. Obviously I haven't written very much down for this month. And then once I've actually posted it, write it down. So I'm a little bit behind, but it'll get done when it gets done. A weekly, more dailies, and then this is where we are today. Um, a couple things, I'm about halfway through, so I'm guessing this will last me a total of six to eight months. I also keep some random post-it notes in the back, just if it's something I don't wanna put in here, but I need to have the paper. And one last thing I've created is I have a handy dandy little pen loop I created here and I will try to remember to link to this below. Um, this was something I found on Pinterest. They were suggesting having it big enough to stick your pen in. I don't like that so I squished it. It's just cardstock with washi tape over it and stuck it in there. So it's handy. And then my pen is always ready. And the only thing I really use in addition to that are my Studlers. My main pen is the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen. I used to be a Micron girl, but I like, I feel like these tips last a little bit longer. They're a little bit sturdier than the Micron. So for Zentangle, I usually use a Micron, but for this, I use the Faber-Castell. So I hope that was helpful and enjoyable for you. And let me know what you think. Thanks.